In this video, we're gonna be breaking down the rear subframe and just giving you an idea of the components that make up the rear running gear of the Audi TT Mark I. I'll break down what happens, the components, just similar to the video I did about the front. This is gonna be much the same. So we're gonna just break it down and show you how everything's going on. Also, if you haven't, make sure to subscribe to my other channel, BMAC Car Mods or BMAC Cars, I'm not sure what to call it yet. Um, there's slightly different content over there. So what you're gonna get over here is just Volkswagen tutorials as such, but on the other channel, you're gonna get more like vlogging style and different types of cars that hopefully we're gonna be doing, even though I've got a bias towards Volkswagens because I just like them, it is what it is, they're good cars. But yeah, let's, um, let's get on with the video. So this here is your rear trail arm. This is what holds, this is the main structure that holds your wheel onto your car. Now here is where the spring goes up onto the, bon up onto the body of the vehicle. And if you can see this here, this is the main area of failure, this rubber bushing here. As you can expect, it takes a lot of pounding, takes a lot of, it's always moving, it's always trying to control the vehicle. When these goes, they will knock along with nearly most of every, every other bushing. But these are the main points of failure here and they are a bit of a tough job to do, but they're still very doable, you know, it's a bushing. Also, if you look here, this is another bushing here and there's one at the bottom as well. And these are what your control arms go on to and they hold your wheel in this orientation. So this holds it more up and down like this. So that holds it like that. And then this stops it from doing, the arms here will stop it from doing this sort of stuff if that's explained very well. And there you can see the bottom one here. Now when this sees, it tends to break the lower arm. And when the lower arm breaks, the wheel falls out of shape. And it's, it's, I'm gonna send some, put some pictures up in the video to show you how dangerous that is. But these arms are generally quite solid. Like I said, with most of these parts, you're only gonna really have an issue with the bushings, mainly because they're just, they're solid cast. But yeah, apart from that, these are all good. I forgot to mention that this is where your ABS sensor is held in the back here. And obviously this is your bearing and on that bearing is what they call an exciter ring. And this is what tells your ABS sensor or your wheel speed, speed sensor what's going on. So if you ever have to remove your wheel speed sensor or ABS sensor, you get an ABS light, this is where it is. Make sure to soak this in plenty of WD-40 or any kind of penetrating grease to make sure you'll be able to release them because they can be a bit tricky sometimes. So yeah, just thought I'd add that in. Okay. So here we've got the control arm, the infamous control arm. As you can see, it's just a plain cast piece of metal. Now the main area of fault on these are the bushings as per usual. 
Now, the common point of failure is the bushing. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see how cracked it up it is on the end there? They're starting to split. When they start to split, they start to obviously, de de means they're degrading. Um, these are original, which is quite good. But yeah, they start to split and obviously they start to move. These still feel quite stiff to be fair, but they are degrading and they're on the way out. So these will degrade. But the most dangerous part of this all, this whole arm here, is the fact that this, yeah, splits. It actually just breaks off. And it breaks off because the bushing that it holds onto seizes and it doesn't allow it to move. So it cracks this one and a half mil piece of steel. As you can see, it's super, super thin. So I'm going to be making upgrades of these to fit on your car. So make sure to watch out on future videos. Um, it's, this is, for me, it's one of the biggest problems on an Audi TT because it's so dangerous at what can happen. So if you've got an Audi TT and particularly you've got this set up, make sure you check these because, you know, there's nothing more valuable than life. So make sure you check these, particularly around this area. And really, if, you, if possible, just upgrade them. Just upgrade them to something better so you don't have to worry about it. These are the only, it's only here that it breaks. Nowhere else is, it's totally fine here, but here in particular is the real, real problem. Um, yeah, the real, real scary problem really. And it really is only thin, thin, thin metal. You know, that's what your life's on. So make sure you check these, upgrade them, just get rid of them. Yeah, and that's it really. These are the control arms. Don't know what this is, you should. This is a drive shaft. Basic, these don't really fail much apart from these rubber bushings here, these rubber gaiters, they're called. They're called steer, um, CV joint gaiters, CV joint gaiters, these. Easy replacement, pull them off, put them back on sort of thing. Um, yeah, that's the only thing to really worry about these. They're pretty good otherwise. They move all nice. This one's a bit broken, as you can see. Been chewed up at the end there. But yeah, they're full of ball bearings. These are not really a super hazard, but it is an MOT or an inspection failure. So just make sure these are good. It's just easy, just simple things like having an, an inspection under the car, just doing a visual. When these break, it will be greasy around here. You'll see grease start to ooze out or some sort of you know leakage on these. But apart from that, really simple really easy and really non-problematic if I am being honest. So here we have the rear subframe. Now once again a, a main part of the uh, rear suspension and running gear is what everything ties into and these four bolts here is how it screws up onto the body. So this is like the main frame underneath the car that everything attaches to. Because this is a four wheel drive, it has a rear differential, which really just breaks down to being another gearbox to the rear of the car to put power into the wheels. Now, this is what you call a Haldex clutch. It's a, it's a wet clutch system. So like the clutch in the front of the car, this is one at the back and it runs in fluid. And this is why this particular unit needs regular interval oil changes, Haldex service oil changes. So this is what you have to do on this one. Now there's a how there's a there's a service procedure which I can show you on my other TT, which I may show you on my other TT if you want to see it. But leave the links in the comments section if you want to see those sort of things. But this is fairly uh, not very problematic in general. I haven't found much problems with it, but it really is dependent on how regularly you service this clutch. From what I remember, I think you are supposed to do every 20 or 30,000 miles. Um, but, you know, if you can correct me down in the section, you can. It's just off memory. But this is the main drive um, unit at towards the rear of the car. And um, the power comes from the front in this prop shaft and drives these two, um, drive these two shafts into the wheels. Now, once again, with all subframes, what you're going to find generally, it's only going to be the rubber points that are huge problems and the general um, 
issues that you will have is you'll hear knocking on acceleration or knocking when you're stopping or, you know, any sort of stress on the car, you'll hear knocking from the rear area. From what I understand, these start to whine and you'll start to get engine codes. And um, yeah, that's all I really know of these. Not really problematic because the car's quite solid in general, but they're the only issues that I do know of. So regular oil services on your Haldex, on your clutch rear diff, and on rare occasions, in my experience, you have to change these. These are quite difficult to come out if you've got to cut and burn them from what people are telling me is the best way. And you've got a couple more bushings here, which um, hold this rear diff up here. But yeah, that's really it, pretty much basic stuff. And um, yeah, that's your update. Last but not least, we've got the anti roll bar here. Now it's just a piece of sprung steel from one side of the car to the other side of the car to transfer weight and distribute it across the car. So it works in conjunction with each other. It's all transferred weight. And um, yeah, that's how it works to balance the car out. Now the main points are here, these bushings here, these rubber bushings here. As usual, it's gonna be um, degrading of these either by oil or you know the heat cycles and all that sort of stuff so these are the common areas they're easily upgradable to poly bushing which I can put a link in the description if you want it just comment and um, yeah these are these are generally foolproof really you can upgrade them um, but I've never really seen the need to if I'm being honest you can make them slightly uh, thicker so the torsion is a bit stronger it it doesn't move so much it's more you know, taut and tight. Now, here are the drop links. These are the drop links. These fail quite regularly, but the good thing about it is they're really easy to change and they're quite cheap. These are like 15 pound and they're super cheap and, and easy to change. So yeah, the actual bar itself doesn't fail. It's always gonna be the other things around it. So that's the anti-roll bar linkage, or the anti-roll bar, I should say. Okay, so that is the rear suspension breakdown and how it all works, how it comes together. And, you know, just, just give you an education so that you don't get ripped off by people, so that even if someone, you know, tells you something's wrong, at least you have a little bit of an idea and a graph. So, yeah, we want everyone to be educated so no one gets ripped off, if that makes sense. So don't forget to add me on all the platforms, you know, your Instagram, your Facebooks, your notifications. I know it's like I'm asking you to do a million things, but these things are really important, particularly now in the YouTube community, so that we can all keep together and you will get to know all the best things about me. The idea really is moving forward is that I get more sponsorship so then I can share discounts and stuff onto you lot because at the end of the day, it's a tough time for everyone, I believe. And... We all need a little bit of help caring and sharing, but unfortunately some other people think different and they will take advantage if they think you don't have an education and you don't understand what's going on. So yeah, that's it all really. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna see modifications and the stuff I'm gonna be doing with my Audi TC, make sure to subscribe to my other channel, BMAC Car Mods as well. So anyway, thank you, thank you, and thank you. We'll see you in the next one.